Oh, don't mind me. I'm just doing an art. It isn't very good. Who do you think I am? Beth B. Rad? Speaking of awesome female artists, this is Study Abroad, where we take a look at some of history's coolest ladies. This episode, painters. Now, it was surprisingly difficult to find female painters. Or, I thought it was surprising until I heard the story of Judith Leister, a 17th century Dutch painter whose last name translates to Bleed Star, and so she signed all of her paintings with a star. But that signature must not have meant much, because while her name was forgotten after her death, her paintings were not. They were just credited to somebody else, her peer Franz Hals. Now, Franz was probably not involved with this. Instead, it was just a bunch of art schmucks who thought art by a dude was more valuable. And when, centuries later, art collectors learned that these paintings were not by Franz, they weren't like, yo, I bought it because it was real pretty. Instead, they complained and then needed to be paid for the loss. If it's pretty, why not? By the way, Leister's paintings were notable for how relaxed her subjects were, because she was a pretty chill chick. How about a woman with zero chill? Artemisia Gentileschi. Artemisia Gentileschi was also active in the 17th century, but in Italy. She wasn't about this trend of women being portrayed as timid and quiet and mousy, just accents to male-dominated paintings. So she became known for many paintings of women. Women in action, women in suffering, women cutting off dudes' heads. Like I said, no chill. But it was deserved because Artemisia didn't have the happiest life. Now her father was a caring man who taught her how to paint, encouraging her in a society who didn't believe that women could paint. Anyway, her dad hired this painter to tutor his daughter. And instead of tutoring, he raped her. And her dad, the real MVP here, took this douche to court. And it was also revealed that he had had an affair with his sister-in-law, a wife that he planned to murder, plus steal some of Artemisia's dad's paintings. The sad part is, Artemisia's centuries-old story is still pretty damn familiar, because he was only sentenced to imprisonment for one year, and he never served. If that's got you feeling emo, though, let me introduce you to the greatest emo of all, Frida Kahlo. Born in Mexico City in 1907, she is known mainly for her self-portraits, which probably took the same amount of time as I spent adjusting filters on my selfies for Instagram. When asked why so many of her works are self-portraits, Frida said, I paint myself because I am so often alone. To be fair, she grew up under a particularly cruel mother, and when she was six, she contracted polio, which kept her isolated during treatment and also screwed up the growth of her right leg so badly that she often wore skirts to cover it up. But being a social outcast didn't stop her from being one of the first women accepted into the National Preparatory School in the hopes of becoming a doctor. There, she became friends with the future leaders of Mexico's intellectual elite, and she learned to embrace her nationality. But her future plans took a radical turn on September 17, 1925, when she was caught in a streetcar accident on her way home. Stuck in recovery with injuries that would haunt her for the rest of her life, she gave up medicine and turned to art. She found her calling. Her work became increasingly inspired by Mexican folk art styles, and she began to dress in that iconic look of a colorful headdress and long skirts in celebration of her ancestry. And she was remarkably successful in her lifetime. She left behind a legacy celebrating Mexican culture and just honest artwork. So those were just three amazing artists who changed the game by celebrating who they were, women, in a world that was so determined to keep literally painting women into the box of a timid subject to be admired as ethereal. They made them human. Leicester made them relax, Artemisia gave them emotion, and Frida made them proud for all of the flaws and tragedies, and if that isn't a work of art, I don't know what is. But maybe you know who I should talk about next. Make your suggestions in the comments down below. If you like study abroad and want some more cool female artists, subscribe to Snarled. And if you want some more of this cubist nightmare, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter at Nerdy and Corky. Bye.